last chapter, everyone's going to build this, but it's going to cost more. And the component items don't change. So now, I guess champions, like, like players that are, manage their mana better are going to be, are going to have an easier time climbing now because of this item basically being 200 gold more expensive if you can force the enemy laner to stay in lane while you just manage your abilities better and farm better you should be able to pull out cs leads or even get people in really bad positions just just off of this change i mean 200 gold is two extra waves you have to stay um which people are going to feel actually Unless they don't stay, they, for instance, buy components, teleport back, but still, like, uh, it's it's something. Of course, Lost Chapter is going to be more powerful. 10% CDR is 266 gold worth of stats. Uh, so, this item is only increasing in price by 200, but it's gaining 266 gold of stats. So, it's definitely going to be built on everybody. So, everybody's definitely going to get Lost Chapter if they use mana and ability power. You know, they're a mage. But you don't necessarily have to complete it, right? This item is super cost efficient as it is. Uh, and it already was before, so it's even better. So I'm thinking that if, if for instance, you th you see a lot of these items the, that build out of Lost Chapter, like none of them are particularly good power spikes, at least for like the early game, one item power spike is what you're normally thinking about. Uh, if none of those are really strong for you, for your champion, maybe you end up just getting Lost Chapter and then building normally. So I'm thinking a champion like, for instance, Victor, right? He doesn't really want to build a full item. He kind of just wants, if he can't afford his his augment, to build little things. Uh, and this might be something he wants to build or, or build towards, right? Because he can get Amp Tome or Mana Crystal until he can get his augments. But he doesn't really want to build a full item for sure. And some other champions that might need mana now, because I was thinking about Aurelian Soul when I looked at this patch, because looking at the Hexex GLP, it's no longer going to have the Catalyst in it. And Catalyst was really strong on Aurelian Soul because it made you tanky, and it also gave you a lot of mana. And of course this item's still giving a lot of mana, but not having the Catalyst for the extra 300 health, 300 health's a big deal, you know, like think you're laning against a bursty mage. Aurelian Soul has to not get bursted for him to do damage. And generally the way he plays, he just wants to shove the wave mid lane a bunch of times, shove the wave, and then uh, go look for Roman the side lane uh, in that 30 seconds he has before the next wave comes, right? So having less health means you're more liable to get like picked off in that area. That's why I'm thinking like this change for GLP hurts Aurelian's soul, but maybe he just gets lost chapter, which is just a good item. And he builds towards something else, you know, like a like a Leandris, which I'll, I'll talk about later. But it, it seems more of like what he wants, you know. He'll need the mana because Leandris doesn't give any mana. So he'll just go Lost Chapter and then he'll build Leandris. And then maybe he'll finish into the GLP, right? Like it makes sense. It makes sense. Um, or even he goes Lost Chapter and then Haunting Guys and then he goes, you know. It doesn't really matter. It's just... Like, ideally, his build probably would have both of these things, just because Aurelian Soul wants to be able to uh, to use his phase rush uh, easily, and this counts as one proc for a phase rush. So all he has to do is just um, hit hit his orb, like orb, Hexic GLP, or just, just use Hexic GLP at the beginning, you're basically guaranteed phase rush. Um, and now if you want to proc phase rush without having Hextech GLP, which is doable. You just auto attack once and then uh, hit two orbs. But that can kind of be a little awkward sometimes. That's why everybody gets this item uh, on him, or he, they did last patch. Okay, so that's Lost Chapter. It's definitely the best buy if you use, if you're a mage, like right? use mana, you can use the stats. Definitely get that first, every time. Not necessarily complete it into a full item, but definitely this is the first thing you're looking for. Like maybe, maybe before that you can get a dark seal. Uh, but other than that, like just don't, don't even consider it. You know, some champions they they start dark seal, refillable, and then they'll want to go and do maybe a lost chapter or maybe a uh, corrupting pot, or maybe they start corrupting pot and they want to go into Doran's ring dark seal. But yeah, you, you probably get the idea. Luden's echo, I think it looks kind of garbage. It has the same effect, has 20% CDR added onto it. 
Um, it it just it it's not as good as Merlin Omicron was. Merlin Omicron gave 100 ability power. It cost it cost 2,900 gold. This cost 400 more. And like like what are you getting for this 400 gold? You know, you're only getting the Luden's Echo Pop, which is 100 damage, which is a lot, uh, and 10% ratio. So, but you're gonna get that 400 gold later. Um, I don't like the I don't like the sound of that. Yeah, it it seems really bad. The Luden's Echo Proc is not worth 400 gold. I would say. Hexic GLP. Basically, is gonna cost it costs uh, three thousand gold, I believe, um, which is consider three hundred less gold than Luden's Echo for a proc that does you know more damage. Of course, it's not guaranteed like Luden's is, but like it's not hard to hit, you know, and it's long range too. Um, so clearly, I'd think GLP is gonna be better than Luden's. Luden's is more for, I guess you could you could say a case for Luden's over GLP is if you're playing a champion like Lux. And you want to one-shot somebody from range, like you just hit your snare, and then you don't want to walk up to like an auto attack range. And if you're not really walking up to an auto attack range, you're not really going to get into GLP range generally. Um, other than that, this item seems really, really strong on certain champions, specifically LeBlanc. If you notice, LeBlanc right now uses Gunblade as her as her first item all the time hexic glp is like the new one it seems to do the same thing as gunblade did but for cheaper right and it's i think gunblade is 3500 gold and this is 3000 gold it has a similar active where it slows and now it mainly because it's longer range and the slow lasts for longer um you can just use uh hextech glp active and then uh use your chain as well as I know that they removed they removed the delay on this item. This item used to have a delay. To oh, crap, it used to have a delay where um, unless they didn't, I haven't played with it. But uh, in the PVE, it, it said that they removed the delay on it. So if they did that, it's super easy on LeBlanc for instance to just W forward, use Hexec GLP, uh, then chain. And that gets you a really good trade right there, or a pick, or a kill, or whatever. Because you can honestly ult chain, like for a double chain, or you can ult Q for some more damage. Uh, yeah. So this is going to be on LeBlanc. I think that'll replace Gunblade. If it's fluid. If they didn't remove the delay, which I think they did, then maybe not. But on a lot of champions that want to, want to do that, they might go for this. Like... Uh, I'm thinking Cassidan used to sometimes build this, and Anivia used to sometimes build this, but a lot of that had to do with the extra health it gave, right? Since this doesn't give a lot of extra health, it's actually kind of, like, it feels, it has to be considered a different item, right? Because a lot of times you built Catalyst as a mage against somebody who was bursty, so you could kind of survive more damage. And in some matchups, that means you win, right? Like, let's say you're Anivia versus... um. Most matchups, like, Anivia does a lot of damage with relatively short cooldowns. Her ulti is just as long as it, it's there, it deals damage, and her E is 4 second cooldown. Really short. Um, so if she can just prolong the trade by having more health, she won't get bursted. She can win matchups, like, versus uh, Syndra or Lux or something like that, who would just, if they can kill somebody before they can return damage, it's really good. Uh, so I don't think it's going to be built as like a rod of ages substitute anymore at all um it's just going to be built on champions who aren't looking to survive but more looking to set up their abilities right they set up like a skill shot if you're playing a champion that has a skill shot you need to land for your combo to work or something you buy a hextech glp right and that's basically what you're doing so like aurelian soul did that before but he actually really liked the health so Relian Soul might just go back to Rod of Ages, honestly. Or he might do what I talked about earlier with the Leandry's Torment thing, or the, the Hunting Guys thing. They're basically the same thing. It's just how far into the tree do you want to go. Um, so I think a lot of people who use Hexic GLP now are going to drop it. And specifically LeBlanc. I think only LeBlanc's going to use this, actually. 
I can't think off the top of my head like who else is going to use it. I mean, maybe if it's really if it's a lot longer range than I'm considering, maybe Fizz can get it and just be like, well, Hextech GLP into Shark, right? He just GLPs you from like halfway down the lane and then uh, throws his ult. If that works, then yeah. I mean, that that's what I mean. In champion, you think, has some important skill shot where if it lands, it's really good. And if it doesn't, it's really bad for you. And they're at mage, Hexic GLP. So I'm thinking LeBlanc for sure. Maybe a champion like Fizz, you know. Maybe a champion like Zareth, maybe, right? If you can slow into, like, your stun, into your combo, that's really good. Uh, personally, I haven't played with this, but think that those kind of champions... Uh, Archangel Staff. I think everybody's going to be building this, generally, by default, unless they have some specific power spike with some of these others. This is other reason I think Luden's Echo is complete garbage, because this thing likes uh, runs circles around it. The thing is, um, this thing only gives like 62 ability power, right? It gives 50, but it also gives more because of the, the increase in mana. It gives 62 ability power. So, it's not bad. It's not 90, but it's not bad. As well as it gives you the uh, the CDR and all that. And the refund, right? The tier, tier of the goddess gives you refund. Or Archangel Staffs gives you like 25% of your mana refund, which is huge. You know, so think Zerath. Um, he'll run out of mana if he just sits in lane spams Q all day. Uh, think Ziggs, kind of the same thing. When they get Arch Archangel Staff, you really don't have to think about mana very much. Uh, and now that it gives 20% CDR, it's a much more viable first item. The, the item becomes very, very um, good looking, actually. To where everybody just wants to build this. Because you also have to think, later in the game, later in the game, it's going to turn into Seraphs. And Seraphs is super cost efficient, but it also gives you the activatable shield. The activatable shield can al can almost be considered health, right? Because the enemy Zed ults you, you use the shield, you absorb a bunch of damage, or something like that. You know, like, it, it's just like a, a personal locket shield. And that's really powerful. That's not something that, that these other items can offer. And that's always, like, why Archangel Staff was pretty good. Um especially on certain champions. But now, pretty much everybody's going to get access to this shield, and this is going to overshadow the other ones, like, across the board, except for maybe on champion like LeBlanc, right, can use the uh, the GLP active to set up a combo really easily for, like, the... You, you know, you know what I mean. I'm saying by default, generally just get Archangel Staff. Never go Ludens, never go Hextech GLP, unless... Yeah, pretty much just never go Ludens, I would say. Uh, unless you're snowballing, if you get like four kills before your first item, maybe you can go this and it'll push the advantage, but no. Landry's Torment. I want to talk about Haunted Guys first because I think it, it does similar things. Uh, and Landry's Torment is just higher stats, right? You're only paying for the 80 ability power and the um, the extra health. So Haunted Guys, I believe, is still going to give 200 health or is it 150 I think it's 200 health and uh, 35 ability power for 1,500 gold. It's no longer giving magic penetration, but it's giving increased damage per second until exiting combat. So a champion that can use this, like Aurelian Soul, you think of, has extended trades, right? Uh, tanks in the jungle, like maybe, like I think Amumu, but like nobody's playing Amumu, right? Nobody's going to start like picking up Amumu just because this item's good for him. But champions that do deal damage in combat and stay a while and potentially have AP ratios uh, could be, you know, the tanks, right? You have a Nautilus or something, could could get good use out of this, or um, a Malphite maybe when they have their Sunfire Cape or they're just trying to stay in combat, getting extra damage. Uh, would be good. So I think this is an item mostly you're going to be seeing on, on tanks as like a luxury damage item, not necessarily something that's completed all the way. Or it could be, but... Basically, if you want an extended trade, off the top of my head, it's just Aurelian Soul and maybe Anivia, uh, because this is going to be one of the only items that gives you... Um, one of the only items that gives you health, right? Because they removed... GLP. So it's either Rod of Ages or this. Or Morella Um 
So I would say most people are going to want Merlin Omicom over this because Merlin Omicom gives uh, magic penetration. Magic penetration helps you kill people a lot better, at least in, in one rotation, right? Whereas this is more like if you're not going to kill people in one rotation, so you're playing a champion like that, or not rotation dependent. Like Aurelian Soul is not really a rotation dependent champion. He's more of like a, the amount, his damage scales with the amount of time he's in combat. Uh, then you'd go with Leandri's Torment. But in every other situation, you'd really just want Morel and Omicon, right? Morel and Omicon is basically the old Leandri's. They just re renamed it to Morello's. Uh, it's also 100 gold cheaper than Leandri's was, which is really strong. Um, so this is definitely going to be like second item on most mages. Definitely going to be like second item on most mages. So <laughs> they wanted to say like, we're going to remove Morel and Omicon from being every in everybody's build, but... Pretty much everyone's going to go Morel and Omicon, where they went, Leandri's, uh, before. Um, at around second item, uh, where you get your... Before it was like, you get Morello's, and then you get Magic Penetration, you get your, your Leandri's, and then you'd get your Void Staff. And if you needed Zonia's for some reason, you, you could get Zonia's earlier, or whatever. Um, but now it's just going to be... You build one of these Lost Chapter items... Or, well, you build Archangel Staff. More specifically, you just build Archangel Staff. And then you get Morel and Omicon. So everybody gets Morel and Omicon because it gives really good stats. It gives you health, which is anti-burst. It gives you AP, which is just... AP is good. Um, and it gives magic penetration, which gives burst. And you might think, like, oh, well, well the items counter each other. But, yeah, that, that means basically... Like, you might think, like, oh, well, if the enemy laner just gets Merle and Omicon, then now they have extra health for anti-burst. I'm like, yeah, that's why everybody goes Merle and Omicon second, because you... And that's why everyone went, Le went Leandri's second, because in this situation that you went Leandri's and the enemy laner didn't go Leandri's, now you can't die, and they can die. Right? So, I, I don't... They wanted more variety, but they just locked this item as the second item for every champion in the game, so... Uh, yeah. This is the same as... I don't know why they didn't just keep Leandries as what it was. Whatever, whatever. This is basically copy paste Leandries, and you'll be building at the same situation as Leandries was built. It actually, in a way, it has a better active because you get more on demand grievous wounds, um, or better passive here. But that's kind of whatever. Like they, I think they wanted to just not have grievous wounds on everybody, but they just gave everybody grievous wounds. You know. Like, as a Vladimir player, that's like a feels bad man. You, you think like, oh, well, now not everybody's going to build Morella Namicon in 8.4 uh, first item. So Vladimir is going to get super good, right? Because uh, not everybody's rushing Morella Namicons. But now, I mean, they're just going to get Morella Namicon's second item. Like, <laughs> there you go. And it's not even a 40% health thing. It'll just constantly put Grievous Wounds on you. So it just like feels bad, man. Spellbinder, I think this thing's busted. Just because it gives so much ability power. It gives so much ability power. What is this? It gives 100. It's cheap. Super cheap. 200 gold cheaper than any of the other items, right? You have to think Archangel Staff was 3,200, so it's 400 gold cheaper than that. You have to think when comparing the item costs, like you might think it's not a huge deal, but comparing the item costs of 2,800 on Spellbinder against the uh, Archangel Staff, which is going to be like the, the, the other other big option like the what most people are going to go most mana using mages are going to go Ar archangel staff so let's say i'm playing vladimir uh and enemy laner is going to be building towards this say something what's something super meta um let me just open up a match what was something super meta uh Oh, shit, they're not playing better shit. Um, uh, let's, let's say they're playing Az... No, Azir's not going to build that. Whatever. Somebody... Crap, I'm blanking. I'm thinking Oriana, but, like, just anybody. I just want, like, the most popular one. Okay. Damn, a lot of these are actually Rod of Ages users. Uh, okay, let's just say Zerath. Zerath's really strong, really solid. Everybody knows Zerath. Zerath's going to be going Archangel Staff. I'm going to be rushing Spellbinder. And um, I'm going to hit 
Spellbinder, 400 gold faster than, than uh, Zerath. Um, that means he has to stay for four extra waves, assuming we're getting the same amount of CS, which um, is kind of unfair because if you're a better player, you'll be denying him farm. Uh, and if he's a better player than you, like if it's a good player in the Zerath Vladimir matchup, he'll be harassing you a lot and he'll probably get jungler attention too. And, um, but let's just assume both have the same amount of gold because it's, it's not uncommon. You're going to get this four waves before him generally. And that means you'll walk back in the lane with a full item. He'll still have components at that point in time. Spellbinder is going to give you 100 ability power, and when you decide, hey, this guy this guy needs to die, you're going to get an extra 100, 100 ability powers. You get 200 AP while he's sitting on components, which are giving him, like, let's say, like, like 50 or 60 ability power. You're going to have this ability to get a 200 AP spike. How are you supposed to deal with that? Vladimir can literally just flash on you and 100 to zero you with this item. There's no other way that Vladimir had before to get 200 ability power this early into the game. Even if you just stacked components, that would be three needlessly large rods. That would be 30, 30, 750. There's no way. And that wouldn't even do it because you'd have to throw an amp tome on top of that. So it'd be 4K gold. So it's just soup. It's silly. Anybody who, who can burst and rushes this item against somebody who's not building a health item. So the people who are getting Archangel staff, right when they turn it Archangels, they're not going to get the shield, right? They still have to stack it into... Uh, seraphs they'll just die right that's the thing i'm i'm worried about if you're not like building rod of ages like you're not twisted fate or cassid or something um or anivia maybe you'll just die to the people rushing spellbinder and that's really feels bad and i think the item will get nerfed because of it because getting 200 ability power it doesn't take four seconds for you to for you to do your combo and 60 second cooldown is basically I'll kill you, and then when you respawn and walk back to lane, it'll be up again. You know? So if your if your combo is lower than um is lower than 60 seconds, like let's say a champion with a really low ulti cooldown is like Fizz. Uh, if he hits the shark and then Spellbinders one shots you with his a billion AP or Annie, I don't know Annie's ult cooldown off the top of my head, but like Annie just stuns you with her tibbers and then full combos you with 200 ap and you have no health you'll just die that's why i think this item's a little bit unfair it's like it's it's the lowest cost complete item that you can get except for rod of ages which is 2700 i believe so if you're not playing at somebody who builds rod of ages and you're a champion that has burst i think just rush spellbinder honestly like imagine the situation like even if you're playing like lux right um Let's just say that you just like land a snare. Just like you're throwing a snare, you land it, and then you just activate Spellbinder, get an extra 100 ability power, and then, you know, E ult, they're dead, or something like that. I mean, Lux isn't even that popular. It's just. It just doesn't seem, doesn't seem right. As well as it gives you target access and that you, you get movement speed. I think this item is very strong, and if you don't need mana, uh, this is going to be really good. And if you have burst, so. You know, the one, the two big abusers that come to mind would be uh, Annie and Vladimir would really love this item. Twin Shadows, this thing's garbage. This is like, you have to think about everybody who built um, Frost Queen's Claim. And just imagine, would they still build this item if it didn't generate gold? How many people built Frost Queen's Claim? Like two. You had Echo mid? And Vladimir, right? It's like the only champions that really like consistently built it was Echo and Vladimir. And now, and, and a lot of that was because of the gold generation, as well as the movement speed you'd get whenever you completed the quest. So you take those two things away. So like, okay, so let's basically add an extra thousand gold to this because <laughs> that's how much you're going to generate in gold. And then take away the movement speed. Is that good? No. Let's say, let's compare it, like, let's say, oh, I'm a support. I don't really care about 100 zeroing people. Let's say, um, well, is it better than Locket? No. Is it better than this Numerella Nomicon item? No. 
Is it better than, than me building like Archangels or, or Ludens or something? If I'm playing like, I don't know, like I'm playing Vel'Koz support or something? I'm like, no. Why, why build it? You just don't. Just super bad. Like the Ghost Active is really nice. I love the Ghost Active. It's just like, I'm not going to build a shit item just to get it, right? Void Staff, people are still going to build it in the same situations. I think maybe if people will be more... I think, honestly, it's going to stay the same as a, as a solid third item every game. You build two good items, which are just going to be either your Archangels or your Spellbinder, and then your second item is going to be Morel and Omicron. Uh, and then your third item is just still going to be Void Staff. And that's just because, you know, how the Magic Penetration stacks, you have your Manel and Omicron, you have your Sorcerer's Shoes, and then you have your Void Staff, uh, and that's the trinity of uh, Magic Pen. It just does a ton of damage. It doesn't really matter that it's uh, 10 less AP because this is still, this item has a monopoly uh, basically on the magic penetration slot because it's the only item that gives percent magic pins. So you have to build it. It doesn't matter how many stats it gives unless it's like completely like gutted. So maybe people will start holding out to fourth item, but like realistically, if you crunch the numbers, like it's the same item. Rabadon's got 200 gold cheaper. And the build path got like a, a ton of shittier, so you have to think that build path that build path is hella shitty. <laughs> um, but you'll still build it, right? You build it in the same situations. If you're snowballing or you're just power farming, and you're like, okay, once I hit this this point, I'm gonna start beasting on everybody, right? That's, that's one of the ways I played Vladimir to get to master. Uh, my strategy was just I'm gonna be playing against the best players in the game. Because I'm trying to like grind up the, to the top of the ladder. So once you hit like master, you're, it's not uncommon to get laying against uh, challenger players and stuff. And especially like even like the rank one players, um, it's not uncommon to you put in there. And you have to think like, oh, well, they're probably a better player than me. So I probably can't just like completely outskill them uh, in, in a way. So my strategy was just to power farm as as and get gold generation through items and stuff. So I used Frost Queen's Claim and all that to pull ahead just by going even, pretty much. Um, or even slightly behind. And so Rabadon's is kind of a way you can do that. Because it's such a strong spike, you can try to pull ahead just through item spikes. So if someone else goes a different second item, like let's say they go Morel and Omicron, which is standard. Uh, Rabadon's will be a bigger spike on a lot of champions because of how much ability power it gives you. It just is kind of hard to get there, and it's kind of awkward, and you have a little bit of a power dip in the early game. Uh, so if you can somehow get around the, the awkwardness of buying NLRs, it's it's better. Of course, it's better at like being cheaper and also getting like five percent more. But like, I think this is something you can go for, but only you should only go for this if you're specifically going for a play style where you're like, I'm just gonna power farm. And play like, kind of not try to dominate when you have a power spike with the other things. So generally, either you see people not try to dominate, either if they're low rank and they don't know what to do, uh, or if they're high rank and they don't, and they're doing it specifically so that they don't draw jungle pressure or um, like support pressure to your lane. So that, that's that's what I did specifically. I intentionally played passive sometimes just to pr keep pressure off of me to secure myself more uh, like resources. So if you want to play like that, and I, th I recommend most people um, to do that, play passive and just try and power farm and get a lead through that because you can do that against pretty much every player, either even like rank one players. Um, as like I did it. I'm a boosted animal and I, I beat like rank one players before with that strategy. Uh, consistently this item is probably your go-to second item um, so yeah when I when I was saying like you go Archangels and then second item I think Archangels you don't necessarily want to go rabbit on second but you could yeah uh, Spellbinder especially though if you feel like you can hunker down and just uh, snowball get perfect farm maybe you'll find kills with the Spellbinder active probably will uh, and you get the second item, Rabadons. You just become a nuke. Like Vladimir becomes like atomic bomb with that flash. He's just 
he just charges the E, flashes in and ults, and now everybody's health is, like, gone. <laughs> everybody's health just, like, decimated by the E alone. And it's, like, 60. I'm pretty sure with Spellbinder and Rabadons, this patch, because they're going to be so cheap, right? Rabadons plus Spellbinder is going to be, like, the, the cost of at everybody else's two item, I believe. Just about. I mean, because Merlin Omicron is 3,000. And uh, so that means that Archangels plus Morel and Omicron is going to be uh, 6,200. And so Spellbinder plus uh, Rabadons is going to be 6,400. That's not a huge difference, right? It's two waves. And if you're able to get an advantage out of this item active, which I think you can generally, you can just go Spellbinder and do Rabadons. And then like Void Staff against somebody who built MR. If, if the targets you're looking to kill built MR, um, or go Morel and Omicon. And that'll be really good. Rylize, I think, is, is quite good now. With well, 10 ability power is actually a lot to just add. And I know I was saying that, that Void Staff, 10 ability power is like not a big deal. It's mainly because Void Staff has a mo monopoly on this item slot. Like, you have to build it no matter what. So it's like... It's like they just nerfed your electricity, and you're like, well, I still need that, so I, I can't just not pay for it. My bad. Like, <laughs> no choice. Um, Rylize, though, it will compete with other item slots. If you're playing a champion that doesn't really need the CDR, uh, Rylize is better. You know, same with, like, Aurelian Soul. He doesn't really look for CDR as a stat, which is why I think he got kind of nerfed with the changes to Hextech GLP. Because generally you want to just go Hexic GLP, Rylai's, Leandries, and that gives them a, a good, you know, well-rounded uh, amount of utility on his items as well as just stacking health to where he's kind of ridiculously hard to kill. Uh, and he does uh, quite a bit of damage still. But Rylai's just better. People who, who built Leandries before could consider going Rylai's now. Mm, so as a second item slot, maybe you'll see Rylai's on some champions uh, that would want to go Morel and Omicon. But generally, I'd, I'd say Morel and Omicon is going to be better as it's the, the magic penetration, right? So the, the trade-off is, do you want magic penetration or do you want the 20% slow? And that's really going to be something you have to think about your champion, right? Does your champion benefit from the setup from the slow? Uh, or the ability to stick from the slow if you're going for multiple rotations? Like, let's say a victor. A victor would want to get multiple rotations off. He'll he'll queue multiple times, right? And so when he queues, gets the slow, his ulti like benefits from the slow, so that the ult can stay on top of people. Like Victor probably builds this item a lot again. Uh, and other champion, like you, you just look at your champion. Does he benefit from having a slow more than he benefits from having the magic penetration? And if the answer is yes, Rylai's is better second item than Morella Nomicon. And that's all there is really to it to think about that. Now to the champion changes. Now this, I think, the item change is the most important things. Um, but the champion changes, they're interesting. Ultimately, I thought none of these changes really, really affected the champion very much, at least for solo queue. Darius, the, the state of Darius right now is he's considered pretty good, but you can't really blind pick him because he has so many bad matchups. The problem with Darius is if you have some way to get away from him after he gets onto you, or if you have um, some kind of ranged advantage or kiting advantage, uh, then you could really punish a Darius pick. So the, the thing about Darius is he can't be blind picked, right? Other In other situations where you can pick him as a counter pick or you can pick him into like an even matchup, he's really quite good. Uh, and that's mostly why you don't see a lot of Darius in ranked just because he's not very blind pickable. That being said, uh, he's a pretty good champion. And most people right now are running Phase Rush and Ghost Flash. They're not going Teleport. Uh, and they're using the Phase Rush because you can get three hits and stick onto people really, really well. And you can just kind of ghost... Uh, <laughs> you can ghost like whenever, right? There are a lot of situations where you can just ghost and then gap close on somebody uh, and, and do your combo and chase him down or even tower dive him throughout the game. So he's already in a good spot. So the changes the changes are two seconds off the W, uh, a little bit of damage on the W at later ranks. I will say people don't generally max the W. I've seen a, a couple people uh, in high rank max W second 
and they will benefit from the 20% attack damage. But the 20% attack damage, I'm not sure, is going to be a huge deal. This is mostly a late game damage, uh, a late game Darius thing. Early game, he's just going to have the two seconds off of his W. And honestly, I think this doesn't matter at all. Um, the reason is, the only time Darius really gets a W on you is if he can land his E. So if the W cooldown is lower than the E cooldown, then it doesn't matter as much, right? A lot of times Darius isn't going to be able to just, uh, against a good player at least, you, they're not just going to let Darius walk up to them and W them, right? Even after Darius gets Phage, Darius kills a minion, and he gets the temporary movement speed from the Phage, he walks up to you, he'll look for an E, right? He's not going to be able to get all the way up to you for a W unless you're like god-awful. <laughs> like, um, He'll go up, get up to you to get in range for an E, pull you, and then do his little auto attack W, Q, into auto attack ult or something. Or if he can get onto you for some reason to do auto attack W, Q, and then pull auto attack, auto attack, or something like that. If he's able to do that, um, this change would be good. But generally, I think this change doesn't matter. The percent armor pin... So it goes from 5% to 10%. People walk in the lane with like 30 armor. Right? 30 armor. So. Right. He gets one and a half armor pin. Basically, throughout the game. It doesn't matter. These are like, they don't matter. Nothing changes. This is what I was saying about the champion in this patch. Like, this doesn't really change anything. He gets slightly more damage, and in some situations, he's going to be able to pull out, like, a kill where he, he couldn't have before, or he'll get, like, you know, a little bit more damage in a trade. But his weaknesses are still very clear. You cannot blind pick him because a competent top laner will counter pick you, right, with something like a Gnar or a Teemo or a, a, a Gangplank or a Camille or an Akali or like a ton of picks aren't good for Darius uh, to play into, that he's still going to be in the same spot. You're not going to see him except as a counter pick or except against one tricks. And you shouldn't be picking Darius now over other things. Like nothing changed. Same guy. Buffs are cool though. Gangplank. Um, Q's higher at, at early game. The whole point is going to be that they don't want Gangplank to just be able to like pistol spam on you with Kleptomancy and then get uh, like the basically you're going to be able to pistol fam, spam 40 or 50% less at level one. And it, and it will do a good job at dealing with that. Um, as well as the barrels are less than half the cooldown. This is the thing that's going to be huge. I think specific, I think Gangplank is kind of dead in solo queue. He's really good. Maybe he's still picked at like the really high ranks. Master Challenger, I think he could be still really good. But the reason I think he's dead is that this gives you a lot less safety in lane. It, generally, the strategy for Gangplank right now is you put a barrel on top of yourself, hit the barrel once, and then you just look for cues on the enemy, enemy top laner. And then whenever they go to trade on you, Whenever they go for a trade on you, you back up and then place a second barrel on, like with them running towards you, hit your first barrel and then just run, right? And then what 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 you do back when they go, you go back into like the okay, we're gonna farm now. You, they they exit the trade. You just place another barrel on top of yourself, auto attack it, and then repeat. Whenever they they get pissed off at you, you know, shooting them too much. Uh, you do the same thing. You place the barrel, and then you hit away. You hit one, use the move speed to get away, and slow on them to get away. It makes it really hard to deal with him. And he could just leave that up for a minute, right? It's like two waves. Now it's not even going to last one wave. Think about that. Enemy laner can just wait until the end of the wave, and you'll automatically have to use another barrel if you haven't used them already. So what this means is he, he has... 
no spare barrels for the ways the way that he plays now if he plays the same way he has zero spare barrels you can't use a barrel as um oh and they, they made it to barrels don't use give vision so you can't use a barrel as a ward you used to be able to use a barrel as a ward it was huge um you could for instance you're playing against a champion like Adarius, right who will want to sit in that bush at top lane and catch you when the waves when the waves collapse right he'll be in the top bush and you'll be going slightly further into the lane than him and then he'll kind of flank you from that bush and get a good trade on you because you have to run back to your tower or you can run back down the river but if darius has ghosts you try to run down the river <laughs> good luck you're gonna you're gonna die 100 percent um so no longer gives vision so we can't check you can't check bushes with it that makes him a lot less safe uh it doesn't even last a full wave Meaning he has to constantly like rebarrel up, and uh, his Q. I mean the Q mana cost I think is the smallest nerf, but this is more of like, um, it's just gonna mean he gets slightly less gold. Like at level one, level two, level three, you know, like like it's actually like through level five, it's it's kind of a, a big deal to where at least until you get Sheen. So right here. For sure, it's going to be a big nerf. So I think GP is not going to really be playable after that. Just because of all of those things, they're quite a lot. The barrel duration means you're a lot less safe. You can't zone the enemy off of uh, giving you free farm. He'll still be super good late game. But the thing is, uh, the reason he's such a, a prioritized pick right now is the safety of his laning phase. Being able to be secured with the barrels. He never has to face check. Now he does. Um, yeah, I think I think he's dead. I don't think people should be picking him anymore. Even if they're one tricks, I think they should drop this champion. He's too hard now to, to make work. Nar, the boomerang is not going to get cooldown uh, at level up anymore, and it's also slightly less at first rank. I don't think that matters a ton. It, I mean, of course it matters, but I don't think this is the nerf that's going to kill Nar. I think he's still going to be a similar power level as he was. And the damage early on honestly makes his all in, like if he wants to all in at level three, makes that quite a bit scarier. So, like, Nar pre-6, right? At level 6, that's only when he's going to feel a nerf with this thing. So pre-6 Nar with an all-in uh, should be a lot stronger. Or, like, 30 damage stronger, which is half an auto attack, which can actually make a difference in trades. So this is honestly, like, it's a nerf, but it's also paired with, like, uh, a situation where he is stronger than he was before. So it honestly isn't too much of a nerf. If you're playing aggressive around the level three, uh, I think it's pretty solid. Like, Nar is pretty much the same power level for the most part. Orn, uh, it's kind of confusing. What they're doing is they're making his, his shield cooldown lower at the beginning so he, he doesn't get safety as much, which is kind of weird because his early levels weren't that good anyways, I'd say. Like this 13 seconds is a pretty long window, but it's long. It's going to be longer. And the um, shield value is going a little higher, and it's going to last a little longer, but the brittle is not going to last as much. So so now his shield is going to be a ton more useful, actually. You, can, you, you get the shield for these early trades, and you just absorb all the damage. You'll still win the trade and be really good against those things like Riven and Kled, who try to go in, and then you just W, and then smack them and knock them back, and they can't do anything. He's going to be the same champion against those guys. Super hard to deal with. The thing here, though, about the Brittle is that he can't be as aggressive. Like, his aggressiveness isn't going to be as scary because what he can do is how he'll how play now. First of all, I don't think Orn is super good. I don't think he's good for solo queue. I think this is a nerf mostly aimed at competitive. I don't think he's good at solo queue. Um, or... To be more specific, I don't think he's good for, for climbing. If you're trying to carry yourself and climb, I don't think this is the guy you should be picking. You should be picking someone like Camille. Uh, yeah, I think Camille should be your go-to. Um, but the brittle going down, how he would play is whenever you go up for a minion, he would look to, to flamethrower you, right? Use his W and flamethrower you. Like once it gets to the later ranks, you know, like at level nine, it's it's the same, you know? He, at level like generally orange landing phase is like the more points in w he gets the stronger he is and it's going to stay the same way um 
he'll just get more points in W. And around level 9, he's pretty much a god. Super strong. Um, and he'll use W on you every time you go up for a minion. And then you'll have the Brittle on you. The Brittle means you went up for one minion, you took damage from Flamethrower, normally it's like 200 damage if he uses it, right? And then when you go up for the other minion, you have Brittle. He can just smack you and get the percent health damage and the knockback. And even follow up with like a Q and then maybe slam into you if he wants to extend the trade. Or he can just leave it at that. Generally, you just leave it at that if they're at kind of high health. But this makes it to where it's three seconds shorter, right? That he can zone you off of that, that second minion you go for. Which means you're going to be getting a lot more minions against Orn than you were before. Uh, which is huge. Um, with his... I thought they made his ultimate give half brittle, but it doesn't say that there. Um, his E, it gives more damage. So basically it's not dependent on the, uh, the knockup anymore. I think... Actually, some some way that you can do the uh, use the E now because you don't have to hit the pillar to get the bonus damage. I played against a guy named Chris, who is a professional top laner in NA, and he um, he played Galio against me, and he used the E backwards. You know, Galio shoots E, he jumps backwards a little bit, and then he goes forward. Well, this guy when I laned against him. He would walk up close to me and then shoot the E backwards so that he jumped the little jump, the tiny jump you do before your big jump. It hit me. And it was like a way to guarantee the damage and then do the combo really consistently. But I, I'm thinking Orn can actually do this in a way where he goes in for his W, uses his Q, auto attack, and kind of move past the target just a little bit before you use the E because now you don't need the wall to get the damage. You're going to get 50 extra damage on this thing. You can play more aggressively where you where you W right here, auto attack, move behind them, and then E back out of the trade. As long as they're not someone like Darius who can just pull you like during your run or something um, against like most matchups, uh, it's going to be really nice. Like That's going to be your new trading pattern because you no longer have to hit the wall to get the bonus damage. So just think about that. Um, I think he's going to be the same power level, honestly. The brittle change is the only thing that really matters, and that's really just something where an intelligent Orn player could do to abuse another laner. I Nobody picks this champion. In solo queue, at least. <laughs> Not really. Um, and the nerfs or whatever doesn't change anything. Poppy, I looked at these, and then I looked at these again, and then I looked at these again, and I think Poppy's really good. Damage going up by 10 is a huge deal. Like, think this is level 1. Just 10 damage extra at level 1, and that's every time you throw it. That'll add up. Um, the early pressure will be a lot stronger. Poppy's early game is already pretty good. Giving your numbers, like, 10 um, are really good, especially on a passive. Uh, they did this same change to Bard not too long ago, where they upped his damage on meeps from, like, 30 to 40. And Bard's success rate went up a lot. Um from like 30, 40, he was like a 47 or 48 percent win rate to like over over 50 percent after that. So it was like a two percent win rate just on that buff, pretty much. Uh, as well as this is going to get five damage, a ten on a wall slam. I mean, you generally don't use the E a ton, and the ton, and the E is kind of a long cooldown. But maybe with with this ten damage, because you're you're generally how Poppy plays is you build you you auto attack the wave. You'll be building up your grasp of the undying. And then once your your ranged attack shield throw comes up, you throw your shield at the enemy top laner, you proc grasp on them, uh, and you get the damage, right? It'll deal 10 more damage. That's really good. But actually, people in Korea who have been playing, or Korea's, I think, the only region actually has been playing Poppy in the top lane in Master and Challenger that I've noticed, and they use Airy. They use Summon Airy. And if you use Summon Airy, you don't ever have to wait for a specific timing with Grasp. You can just throw the shield at them every time it's up, which is what you should do. And you'll proc Airy. You'll proc the extra 10 damage, which is almost like a second Airy proc. And uh, that really adds up. And then this is 5 extra damage. She's going to get more kill pressure. I think she's really good. 
I think people just don't run summon airy on them on poppy and i think they should you run summon airy primary and then go um grasp of the end like you go resolve secondary so you get the the hybrid stats of the flat ad and the the flat health and you can just play you know properly like you cue them you cue them the ground whenever they come up for minions so they have to take the, the damage whenever they go for the minion and then you throw the shield at them every time it's up and you're gonna do really well. I think Poppy is very underrated right now. And this change actually does very good for her. I wouldn't be surprised to see her go up to like a 52% win rate and a pretty high play rate. Uh, she's always been very solid. Well, I think she is very solid right now. And she was for like the last patch or two. Um, this might make her popular. Definitely worth playing. Especially with Gangplank getting nerfed and stuff, these tanks are a lot better to pick actually than they were before because if you play against the gangplank he's not nearly as strong in lane as he was anyways i don't know renekton i think this buff's actually quite nice renekton's in a, uh i don't even like he's he's in a he's relatively weaker than the other top laners but renekton has a lot of situations where he can still be very useful even the last patch i was playing him and the thing about renekton is generally how he plays is he builds really tanky he just gets a black cleaver and then he goes tanky. Uh, and then he, he'll dive the enemy AD carry in the team fights. He'll just dash. His double dash is really hard to get away from, especially his AD carry. Once you like go into for a fight, like Renekton double dashes onto you, stuns you, use the Q. He has his ultimate on. That already did a bunch of health and you're trying to get away. Um, having extra 20 damage, right? At level 9. A twenty dam extra twenty damage because you have to think those team fights are happening at level nine plus. I'm I play actually played this guy a couple games um, last patch. You, I already killed people and I'm thinking an extra twenty damage because I'm using this you know two two times generally on the enemy ADC because that's like a seven second cooldown or something something like that. I don't know. Uh, pretty short cooldown to where you can use it twice. Doing more damage twenty more. 40 more if you use it twice. As well as the Empowered Q going up by 25. Could be a big deal. His early game is still pretty good. His early game's like always been very strong. Uh, but the extra 20 in the mid game is quite good. It might be enough for him to get into a very good spot. Oh, I, I would say he's worth, he's worth playing. I wouldn't say he's really dominant, like he's not better than Camille, but he's quite good. He has a lot of good matchups. He generally has like no bad matchups because of his mobility uh, and how he plays. He can generally do what he needs to do no matter what. And he has multiple win conditions and that he can be a split pusher or he can be a, uh, a team fighter. Uh, and he's just very solid in the early mid game and, and up through like 25 minutes, which is um, very, very useful. I think he's he's worth picking, and I think the buffs even make him quite a bit stronger. Uh, uh, people are underrating how much the 20 damage buff is going to do. If you remember Vladimir specifically, one of the changes that brought him into the meta out of being like kind of underplayed, undervalued, um, was his Q was increased by 20 damage. Of course, this was at, at level rank 1 as well, just 20 damage across the board. Went from 70 at, at level at rank one to 90 at rank one and that's not happening here it's just uh 20 at the max rank but as well as vlad got some higher base damage uh went to like 52 from 48 which makes mostly less hitting better but also you know you're trading every time you throw your queue that made him into the meta and so i'm thinking this change can't really be overlooked renekton's not in a terrible spot and i think this is might be enough for him to be quite good. Like, worth considering picking over, like, other things. Other bruisers. Jax, the Counter-Strike buff fix, it doesn't really do anything. Generally, I noticed in the jungle, if I hit the camp, and then I tried Counter-Striking right before uh, the camp hit me, then I take a hit of damage. That's the only... Like, it's always been annoying, and knowing that that's gone, that's really kind of nice, but it doesn't have many practical applications you're just Hashinton stream is not going to be as entertaining because he won't whine about this anymore <laughs> that's the only meaningful effect of this nerf or i mean buff 
Frozen Mallet. Uh, basically, I guess they think that nerfing Frozen Mallet means they don't have to nerf Gnar as hard. That's probably 100% of the reason why, why Gnar didn't get nerfed harder. Because Frozen Mallet's going to only sell for 20%. This is also a nerf to Teemo. If you go the, the Teemo build where you go Frozen Mallet and then go on hit, or Frozen Mallet and then go the triple zeal item for the uh, Brunon, Static Shiv, Fire Cannon, Teemo, or Brunon, Static Shiv, uh, Phantom Answer, Teemo, it does work. Um, it's a little bit of a nerf. Mm. The, not many people build this item. In the meta right now, it's just Gnar and then a Kogma when he's like at fourth or fifth item. And already I've been seeing, I know in the Chinese server, they don't build Frozen Mallet. They build Randuin's Omen. And inst like the generally the way people use Frozen Mallet here is it's really good for once you get onto someone, you can basically auto attack them to death. They can't run away. But also you can kind of peel for yourself. But in the Chinese server, they build Randuin's Omen. And they can peel people off of them with the active on, on Omen. But also, since the enemy AD carry is generally building crit, right? Unless they're Varus, in which case they're going against Suze and Witsen. But if they're building crit, like you're playing against Tristana, you get Randuin's Omen. You go like Ginsu's and then Wit's End and then Randuin's Omen. Uh, and now that Tristana can never 1v1 you because you got all this armor, you've got the crit damage, like you have the 20% reduced damage from crits, you just 1v1 the enemy ADC all day. Uh, so I think already, like for Kogma, it's just going to be like. People just don't know about the random and zoman thing yet. So if this nerf is for Kogma, which is basically I think Riot's thinking, oh Kogma and Varus, or I mean Kogma and Nar, those are the people who use it. I mean, yeah, um, mostly Nar always gets this as a second item. Generally, I think maybe I, I think he still gets this as a second item. It's not a huge deal. Um, but the eighty carries should be building random and zoman over Frozen Mallet. Uh, gives it gives better stats, better utility. Uh, and once people figure out that, like this nerf won't matter at all in terms of AD carry. Evelyn buff. I think she'll be really good. Evelyn w went from really good to like meh. Like she was okay, but not at near. She, like she went from super dominant, like top tier, right up there with Kha'Zix is like, oh my God, these champions must both be banned or someone dodging when it gets locked in. Uh, to never banned, hardly ever picked, the win rate's like whatever. Um, I think this will kind of bring her back. I'll play her. Uh, she's really, really quite good for carrying. Uh, getting 15 extra damage at, you know, your first gank, right? Or even here, 25. Like I was talking about with, with um, 20 damage changes, they do matter, especially in the early game. Uh, even a good example was... The most disgusting change they ever did, basically called them out, was with the, the um, saber changes. They gave her 50 extra damage. I was like, 50 damage at level 1. That's very peculiar with her Q. Saber had 58% win rate. They hot fixed her within the day. I'm like, how can you not tell that? But either way, uh, I'm just saying, Evelyn's really good. I would say this makes her uh, really good. She gets more stopping power in the early game all the way throughout the game because she's getting 15 extra damage on her unempowered, and it's basically always going to be empowered, so 25 extra damage throughout the game. It's a big deal. Fiddles, I think this guy is going to be the dark horse of the patch, like, mostly because Fiddles generally, he maxes his drain first, right? And then he'll max his fear. So Dark Wind's going to be the last, last thing you max. Um, but basically, so, so the cooldown re reduction here can basically be considered for like the entire game for the most part to go from 12 seconds to 10 seconds. So it's already going down quite a bit, which is nice. Um, bonus damage to monsters is also really big. Uh, this thing I haven't, I haven't played, uh, to see like what breakpoints this allows him to hit when he's clearing his camps. I haven't played, but most likely... This makes Fiddlesticks' is clear so much faster than it was before. Like, so much. Like, not even... Like, might might even be double. Might even just double or, like, 50% increase his clear speed with, with just this change alone. Because generally, he drains the big minion, and he crows the little one. So if the crow's doing, like, 50% uh, extra damage... Like, I know for sure this means it's going to be killing those two little wolves. When he uses the crow on those little wolves, 100% going to kill both of those things. 
Um, but maybe it means he can kill the little raptors pretty easily, so it makes him to where he can clear the raptors very quite easily, as well as um, uh, the enemy raptors make some pretty good counter jungle. It could, right? I don't, I haven't played this and tested it, but it could. Uh, no, no longer deals don't bonus damage to minions. Doesn't matter unless you're playing mid fiddles. This doesn't matter. I think jungle fiddles is the way to go. The cooldown reduction on this it makes a lot of sense. I have no idea why this was so long cooldown. Um, before it was always made it really un un like lame actually uh now it's just gonna be fiddles ult actually busted i'm gonna say that it's it's actually so scary and so powerful because he gets to jump over a wall so like over wraith pit or over a wall like generally the strategy is you use it over a wall all you have to do is the, the crowstorm has to take you over halfway through the wall and then it'll automatically put you on the other side of that wall right so there are s every wall in the game can be jumped by fiddles ult, which means you get so many more ways to gank a lane th with your ult where you can get a flank with your ult or even a counter engage with your ult uh, over a wall and it's almost always a kill if you use it right like if you've played against a fiddles like one trick or something like you know like how scary that fiddles can be to where you like just ward spots that you think you shouldn't have to ward you know or i think most people think they shouldn't have to ward uh, in order to survive those ganks. And now that it's going down by 10 seconds and even 30 seconds at level 11, Fiddle's generally really aggressive early jungler. So he will snowball games and he'll hit that level 11 pretty pretty quickly. Like he normally gets a lead and a lot of kill participation if Fiddle's gets going. And with faster clear, he's going to be able to gank lanes faster. He's going to be able to uh, hit that level 6 and faster because he's going to farm faster. I think he'll be much, much... Well, I... I know it'll be much, much better, but I, what I don't know is will this bring Fiddles into the spot where he's like solo queue god, you know, where if he breaks like 53% win rate, um, then he's like, okay, this champion needs to be picked before people start permabanning him, right? And I'm thinking in, in my head, I'm like, <laughs> he might be solo queue god status. I'll just, I, I'd have to play him a game and see, but like, I think this guy might be solo queue god status. Callista, shorter range, it matters. Lower attack damage, matters. Higher attack speed, it's nice. Attack speed growth went up. No longer games attack speed, gains attack damage. Okay, so this attack damage will offset this. So then this doesn't really matter. So ultimately, when you're next to your Sentinel, you're gonna have the same stats, you're just gonna have a shorter range. But she's also going to scale better with attack speed items because of this thing. The All of your attack speed items, like for instance, if you get an item with 50% attack speed, it's multiplied against this number. So when this number is going up by like 0.5, right? Or 0.05, that means you're... Uh, well, I can do the math. Calculator. So 0.05... Uh, divided by... 0.694. Your your attack speed items are going to be seven percent more powerful than they were before. Or well, a better better one would be six nine four divided by 0.644. Yeah, seven is slightly higher than seven. It would doing it this way, but like yeah, seven percent more effective are your attack speed items. That's a big deal actually. Uh, because she builds two attack speed items every game. She goes uh, Brilliant the Rune King, and then she goes Renan, so those are going to be 7% more effective. So that's nice, but she's getting 25%, 25 reduced auto range. A lot of times it's going to go unnoticed, but generally how Callista does her trade is whenever you go onto her, she has the option to auto attack you, jump towards, and then Q jump towards, and then continue the trade, run you down all the way back to your tower, and then use Rend, and you'll die a lot of the times uh, if she catches you out far enough into the lane. Um, the thing is, when you have 25 range, you're actually, you're shorter than most, you're shorter range than most AD carries now. So maybe they're going to be able to get a tr an auto attack in, and then use fleet footwork to get out before you can return trade. And if that's the case, it feels really bad on Callista. If that's not the case, then it doesn't matter. The change is she's going to be a similar power level than she was before. I, honestly, I'm leaning towards she's going to be similar power level as she was before, because her mid game is going to be stronger with this attack speed change as well as her um, 
like we're in this attacks this attack range doesn't matter as much in the mid game or generally you're either getting dived or you're following up an engage or you're setting up an engage with your uh with your ult to where it's it's doesn't matter as much like the 25 range doesn't matter at all to for the most part this thing the the reduced mana return on on um Minion, like kill generally what Callista does is she will auto attack a minion to where it's pretty like it's low it'll die to the rins and then she'll auto attack a champion and then rins and she'll get the refunded rins cooldown and the refunded mana they basically make it to where you can't do that as much you can't just basically potentially get six rins on the enemy laner every every wave because you just rin reset off the minions for free like but 20 minutes like only missing out on 20 minutes is not a big deal in my opinion and it scales up like level five i think is when she starts getting really scary having only 10 mana cost to do that trade like she doesn't use a ton of mana so i don't think it matters i think calissa is going to be pretty much the similar power level as she was before you pick her in the same situations she's still gonna be super good i don't think the nerfs do much kogma this buff actually is really good i think he goes back to to being quite a contested pick in solo queue and he'll probably just get banned again they thought they over nerfed him but then people were just playing him still and he's still kind of respectable as a picked because ginsu's power spike is so strong and so they buff him back up to where he is six percent he's not quite at seven percent where he was before when he was a god uh so they they found out five percent is too much they put it six percent i think he's he's just gonna go back to being a god i don't think he was there off of a one percent margin and knocking him down two percent put him into garbage tier he wasn't actually garbage if bring him back one i think he'll be strong i don't even think he i don't think he'll really be balanced because again what i was saying with the random and zoom and kogma people just weren't doing it right they just weren't doing it because they don't know about it so it will definitely be you know a he'll definitely be really good you know, if imagine if you go against Suze, and then Wits End, and then Randwin's Omen, you have Magic Resist, you have Health, you have um, like top top class damage because of that that spike with Ginsu's, and then another spike with Wits End. Like you can go Randwin's Omen, you'll never be able to be killed, you'll still shred everybody. It's crazy. There's like no counterplay. Like there's a it's an 80 carry with no counterplay. That's why I say the best 80 carry to climb with right now is Varus. Because you build defensively, you get a defensive boot, you get Wits End. And you get, um, like, you get Wits in second item, right? But you build so many defensive stats, it's hard to shut you down. You know, other AD carries, like, let's say, like, Tristan. Tristan is the other one people say, are like, oh, that's the best ADC. And I agree, Tristan is really good. I put her below Varus, though, because there's more you can do about her, right? You can you can actually, you can you can itemize against crit. You can also just burst them, right? You can just, you can just send your Syndra... If you're sent, like, I know Syndra's not very popular, but, like, I just use her as an example for a burst mage. You send your burst mage to 100 to 0 them. Or let's put Syndra is, like, it, everybody generally has been scarred by Syndra's just pressing R on somebody and 100 to 0 them. You can, so, for instance, the Syndra will just be able to 100 to 0 the Tristana, right? They won't be able to 100 to 0 the, the, the Varus or the Kog'Maw because they have a wit's end. They have this magic, this magic resist. Uh... And that's what makes them really strong. And so Kogma might not be as good as Varus, but I think he might go back to just being top two, right? So I would definitely, if you plan on, if you're an AD carry player and you just want good AD carry to play and Varus isn't available, I think Kogma is good. I think you should be thinking about going the uh, Randuin's Omen on him as like a, a frozen mount substitute or maybe as like a a guardian angel substitute because generally that third item is when you get flexibility um and that should feel really good okay and be really powerful as well because you can even use that random zone to peel yourself if for instance somebody gets onto you right you can press the active and you get peel q reverted to pre-work Okay, um, base attack damage goes down by three. That's lame. Attack damage growth goes up by three. That's, I think, Sterax. Right when I think of that, I'm like, okay, so Sterax Rengar is much more powerful because Sterax goes off a of base attack damage, right? So this is going to go up a lot. How many levels does it take to get back this three damage? Uh, two, 
right? So, or wait, no. This would be uh, 1.5. Oh yeah, it is, it is two levels, um, stupid. Okay, so, and then it'll scale higher throughout the game. His attack speed goes up, wow, that's really nice. Having higher, so, so 6.65 is the standard. Higher than that is really good. And this is what I was saying about attack speed items are multiplied by this number. So like Hunter's Machete is much better on him. You have to think that with Ringar's reworked uh, Q, the Q going back to just being an all attack reset, he's not going to be able to clear things like Raptors and Wolves and the AOE camps like uh, Gromp, or I mean AOE camps like uh, Krugs, right? And Raptors, specifically Raptors, as easily as he did before because he could do Q and Power Q and it just like decimates the Raptors. Um, this is a kind of change I think they had to do in playtesting. Attack speed growth going down, it's whatever. If, if Critgar comes back, he's not going to care. Uh, and this number is going to be awesome. So that's kind of fine. I think the base stat changes are really nice. The thing to take away from here is that uh, Sterax is something you can build. And I'm already like the cogs are spinning thinking about top lane Ringar, Bruiser Ringar going like... um. <laughs> Black Cleaver into Sterax into uh, like Phantom Dancer or something, and then um, just like mauling people, right? Like, think about it. Black Cleaver, Sterax. Black Cleaver is like pretty tanky, right? For first time, it gives uh, 300 health, right? It also gives a killing power, which is nice. And then Sterax makes you even tankier, right? You can kind of just play to dive the enemy ADC, and then you're too tanky for them to like try and really commit to you. And then you can go. Um, Phantom Dancer, which makes you, like, it's much nicer split push item and, like, a chase down item. Uh, the, what is it, Static Shiv could be good, too, for Wave Clear, as well as um, Burst, if you're, if you're looking for that. But then just, just transition into, after that, that crit item, you go Infinity Edge and then another Zeal item. That's what G Gangplank does right now. The, the really popular build on Gangplank is Trinity Force, Sterax, and then Full Crit. He goes Trinity Force, Sterax, Phantom Dancer, Infinity Edge, Static Shiv. And that will be really good. I think I'm thinking maybe like Top Ring Ringar can do this. Um of course this is just like the theory and crafting me. I don't think that's gonna become meta because I, I think changes take a while to adapt. But I think that'll be a good a good place I would start uh thinking about something like that. Unless I wanted to go for more of like a full full assassin route going like a dust blade into static shiv into infinity edge. Trying to go crit. Like, that would be the, the way a crit guard would go, right? Um, unseen Predator. Flat attack damage removed. Okay. He gains percent bonus attack damage instead. Oh, well, I mean, he already got he already got 20%. So it's just going to be at the higher ranks. He's going to be getting 5% more. He's losing 20 flat damage, which is a lot, actually. That's almost 800 gold. If you think pickaxe is 25 AD and it's 800, 8, 875, uh, it's almost eight, 800 gold of stats he's losing off of this. That's a big nerf. Um, the 5% bonus attack damage is not going to make up for that. Not anytime like soon. Like, right, And if you go like the double zeal item, I'm pretty sure you never make up for that 20 AD with this change. Um, once he, he gains bone... Uh, twisted tree line. Oh, okay, okay. This twisted tree line doesn't matter. Um, leap offset range. He's going to get closer to targets, it looks like. Mm, it's nice. Uh, I can't see this mattering. I can't see this being meaningful at all. I guess it's just like a quality of life kind of thing when you don't have to queue in position with queue. It's just being closer is better. Uh, leap speed goes down. That's fucking lame. That means his ult is a lot. So, so it might think like 150 speeds not a big deal, but like that is more reaction time for the enemy to flash, more reaction time for the Janna to press R on you, um, the more reaction for like them to pop their locket shields or something or anything, right? Or for them to you know just throw their abilities at wherever you're jumping if you're trying to like jump out of a bush. So that's fucking lame. Yeah, he has a visual response whenever the whatever. Um pretty much a revert, yeah. 
Base damage is kind of low. It'd be better at like 30 or 40. If it was like 30, it would be what old Rengar was. Um, I think the low balling this one, I think it should be 30 or 40 or maybe 35, right? Would be a good place to start. 1.1 attack damage is the same as it was before. Actually, before it scaled, I believe, one point, it started like 1.0 and then it would go 1.1, 1 1.2, 1 1.3. I could be wrong, but I think it's fair. It's the same as uh, like a Wukong. Wukong's auto attack reset on his Q is the sim is similar to this kind of thing. And same with Trundle, I believe, similar. Bonus attack speed forty percent. Wait, what do you mean? Oh, attack speed. Q is now an attack reset plus an attack speed buff for the next two attacks. Oh, hmm. Very cool. So they put the attack speed buff on the Q. I like it. That's going to help with the jungle clear a lot. For the next two attacks, it's like, uh, you kind of can think about it like a, uh, a Lee Sin passive almost. 40% for two attacks. And then the empowered, just a higher attack speed, it's a higher attack ratio. Again, the damage looks kind of low, honestly. What is that, only 50% more than the uh, regular one, but whatever. Um, this going down by four seconds, mainly I'm thinking top lane Rengar, that's gonna matter more because when you think Jungle Rengar is not gonna be using it twice in a camp, maybe it means he gets, has it up for every camp, but this is more of a buff for top lane Rengar. And then two seconds off of the max rank, more of a buff for, you know, um, like a, a more bruiser Rengar who's gonna be able to use these multiple times in a fight. In like a team fight, right? Because an assassin ring guard is only going to be using these once, generally, unless he's empowering it. Thrill of the hunt, enemy vision range went down to sixteen hundred. That's really nice. Wait, wait. Yeah, so this is when the um, wait, what? What is this saying? Is this when the enemy gets the exclamation point? Like when the enemy gets the little, like, you're going to die symbol over their head? I think that's that's what they're saying went down. They really didn't explain this very well. <laughs> enemy vision range. Who wrote this? So it, I think this means that the enemy vision range, because I was reading about this on PBE, enemy, enemies don't get that little you're going to die symbol over their head until this range. But Rengar can see them. Um, from this range, or from this range, right? So now it used to be that people, if, if Rengar could see you, you would know. But now when Rengar sees you, you only know when he's closer. And this is a lot nicer because before, one thing you had to do on Rengar was you had to not use your ult until you were like close enough to where you can run them down. They can't get to like the tower fast enough, right? Now you can just use your ult to get to the place faster and like bypass wards and stuff. Uh, and it feels a lot more comfortable to use that way. Because they're not going to see you right when you press R. They're going to see you when you get close. I think that's fair. Crit cat. Rengar's leap out of his ultimate no longer critically strikes. Well, that sucks for lethality, Rengar, because that critical strike one shot at people <laughs> with dust blade. Rengar's leap out of his ultimate now deals 30% total attack damage. Okay, as bonus damage and shreds armor. Well, 30% total attack damage. That I, It also makes me think, whenever they say total attack damage, I think Sterax, the first thing. So it just means Sterax has some scaling with this now. Um, bonus damage and shreds for that number. For four seconds. So it gives armor pin. So I'm thinking Sterex might become a thing, like a more bruisery Rengar might become a thing. Other than I'm thinking, like, how is he going to fit that in? Is he going to go Warrior and then Trinity Force or Warrior and then um, Black Cleaver and then Sterex? I mean, he could. There are champions that did that uh, before. Or even Warrior into um, Deathblade into Sterex. I know you don't get the, as much uh, health scaling, but if you're just trying to tank up, 
It just seems that Sterex is now an item that he can build. Before it was like, eh, I don't get as much damage off of Sterex as I would another item. But now that's not really think something you're gonna, a reason you're not going to build the item. So I think Sterex is going to be good. Sterex is a strong item. I just don't know. Like maybe Warrior, Trinity Force, Sterex, maybe. And then go a Tanky or go Crit or something. You know, St Warrior, Trinity Force, Sterex. Uh, static Shiv, Infinity Edge, I don't know. Like, any number of things. So you can go full crit guard where you go Dust Blade, Static Shiv, Infinity Edge. Right. And then you have the Tiamat, right? You go the Tiamat so that you can wave clear, and then you go the um, Tiamat, Dust Blade, Static Shiv, Infinity Edge, and then uh, Phantom Dancer. We'll be, we'll be the crit guard build that, like, the people... Like, that would be the equivalent of the old crit guard build. Uh Lethality build still going to be the same. It's probably not as strong as it used to be without the free crit. So, honestly, it looks like these are straight up buffs to to armor pin Rengar, or not? I mean, not armor pin the Bruiser Rengar. So, if you like playing tanky Rengar or Bruiser Rengar, this is good because auto attack resets good, and um, the the battle roar is good. Otherwise, I think Rengar might not be worth playing, right? If you're not willing to play tanky Rengar, I think he's not worth playing. The reason is they took so much damage away from him. Took so much damage off the passive, took so much damage off the Q, and um, they took so much damage off the ult with the free crit. Uh, if you're not taking... All the only thing they did is they add more utility to him. He gets more movement speed, you can't see him as fast, so he can run faster across the map and not get seen. Um... He gets lower cooldown heals. It's like... And he gets the ability to build Sterax. So it's like, you should just be building a uh, tanky Rengar. Honestly. Warrior, Sterax, and uh, full tank. <laughs> Something like that, you know. Uh, it could be, could be whatever. You can you can build like a, a uh, Black Cleaver in there. But I think the jungle build is going to go back to being maybe a warrior uh, Black Cleaver. And he probably has to have Tiamat to clear well. So, you know. Of course, Dustblade's still a really good item. So, I don't know. Overall damage nerfs. I don't think he's going to be as good. Unless you build tank. Yeah. Shivana, attack speed, attack damage growth down, twin by damage down. That doesn't matter. Nobody's picking her, really. She don't pick very much. Wouldn't make much sense. Wait, the power increase of press the attack. Well, if power if press the attack's getting better, then these nerfs are probably just compensatory. In which case, she's staying the same power level. So I'm just going to say she's the same. If uh, the same press the attacks getting buffed. Swain, mana cost decreased on W. Feels good, man. Uh, the heal is going up. Cooldown and soul practice are refunded if Swain dies. But the cooldown is, is. The cooldown of his ult is fully refunded if he dies. What's the channel time? Is the channel time like. um? The, the 12 seconds that he has to build up his his explosion? Or is it like some channel time, like a quarter second channel time where he's casting the ult? I think it's the quarter second thing because if it's just... Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. I think it's just the quarter... Like if there's a quarter second cast time. Health threshold reduced. So basically he's going he's gonna to be able to ult faster because it's going to go up by five, which is like uh, it's going up by 25%. And it's also going down in cost by, I don't know, I don't know like to 13%. So ultimately, he's going to end up getting the thing like 30% faster before he can uh, explode. And that's nice, uh, more for like reliable kills. This change, uh, I played a lot of Swain. He's actually my most played this season because I've been jumping around champions a lot. Uh, I, I feel pretty comfortable on him. I think he's strong. I think Swain is very strong. But he doesn't really fit the meta that, that it was at least last patch with the... Um, the roaming, the roaming mages where you play Talia and Aurelian Soul and you just push the lane and then roam. Swain doesn't do that, so honestly, he's not as good uh, in that meta. Maybe he's more powerful with the mage item reworks. Uh, definitely these changes are nice because what you do 
is when the enemy walks up for CS, basically all you're looking for is enemy walks up for CS, you throw the E, you just basically have to get good, like go into the practice tool and put a dummy up and feel like the max range and how long it takes for your E to hit and basically just go for the max range E's. Uh, if you can hit a max range E and you get comfortable with the distance of it, all you have to do is when they walk up for CS, max range E them and then uh, pr place the W and then pull them into the W and Q them. Easy. You go for that kind of trade in lane, it's really, uh, really powerful. Swain actually heals for a ton of health by doing that because this thing gives him a uh, soul fragment as well as his yank on his passive whenever you hit the E. Makes him very hard to lane against, very hard to push out of lane. Uh, he'll just be going, you know, Rod of Ages now and then hitting this thing and yank and he'll be, yeah, really hard to push out of lane. This thing's going to make his, his early game, like it's just make him feel nicer. But the 20 mana cost reduce actually matters a lot because he, he did go oom. Um when you would uh do that c combo a couple times so having 20 men off is pretty nice talon he has reduced armor increased magic resist i honestly don't think this affects him at all like obviously this is targeted to make top lane talon a little weaker and mid lane talon a little stronger because mid lane is going to be playing as mages top lane is going to be playing against uh bruisers generally or or attack damage champion so you could think like, oh, well, this is going to make him better as an anti-mage, but if he plays aggressive, he's going to be taking minion damage. Minion damage is affected by armor and losing two armor. Like you have to think in the early game, are you going to be taking more damage from the enemy champion when you go in or the enemy minions? And generally in the trades that Talon went for where he hit the rake and then he was just going to jump forward and queue and auto attack, the enemy laner was like trying to run away and you're going to take most of your damage from the minions. So mostly this, this magic resist thing, is going to affect him where if he's in a lane where he gets bullied a lot like an azir azir last time i played talon i remember azir was annoying because but this was also before azir's nerfs where his q wasn't his uh short cooldown but a matchup like azir for instance where you can push the shoulders in you uh, soldiers in you and, and harass you like that he's going to be able to take a, a bit more harass with this uh uh, magic resist than he did before so maybe if he if he's like in a, a defensive matchup he can go door and shield or something uh and, and weather through a lot of harass if he's in a matchup like that i can't think of many that that would uh, warrant you being that defensive but ultimately i think talon's about the same power level like i don't even think he gets stronger or weaker i think he's just the same really he's a better mid lane pick than he was a top lane pick maybe that's the only thing worth consider worth considering which is good because he does fit the meta with the roam, the roaming thing. So he does naturally fit a bit better in the mid lane in that aspect where you have two lanes to roam to as opposed to one. Buster shot. It's getting a longer cooldown. Tristan is a really powerful champion. And it seems like if she gets ahead, she can kind of 100 to 0 you with her combo. She jumps forward. She jumps forward. Puts the bomb on you, does four auto attacks, and then uh, she gets another jump. She can chase you down, and then she can, like, ultimate, then auto attack you and finish you off. And that thing, uh, 20 seconds added. 20 to 30, scaling up to 30. Like, she just can do that less. I don't think this is a huge nerf to her. It's just, like, it's kind of whatever. I mean, this isn't, it's kind of whatever. It just reduces her oppressiveness in the laning phase if she gets ahead. For instance, reduces her oppressiveness there. I don't. She's. I have her as the. I, I personally believe she's the second best ADC, right next to Varus. And her getting a nerf, I don't even think moves her off of number two spot, unless the Kogma buffs uh, move him up, right? Because the rest of the AD carries generally can't compete. Maybe there, there's probably like four or five, five ADCs that are really good. There's Varus, Zaya, Tristana, um, Twitch. And uh, I'm thinking Kog'Maw with the, with the changes. Before, outside of that pool, you generally wouldn't really like to have one of those champions on your team. Sometimes you'd see Caitlyn. Sometimes you'd see Jinx. They're a little risky, I would say, because Caitlyn kind of falls off in the mid game and Jinx has a really long ramp up time. But does this make her change her power level versus those other champions, Zaya, Twitch, um, Zaya and Twitch specifically, right? Because she's, she's definitely not going up with this change because Varus was untouched and he's completely the strongest AD carry. I'm surprised he avoided the patch notes. Um, 
I think she's going to be fighting for the number two spot with Zaya, Kogma, and um, yeah, Zaya and Kogma. Maybe Twitch, but Twitch is decidedly below Zaya. So basically, is Zaya or Kogma number two? And then Tristana is either going to be number three or number four. And Zaya, Kogma, uh, Tristana are going to be you know top fighting for the the lower spots, right? So nothing changes like she doesn't she doesn't really go down if she even goes down she doesn't go down much twitch gets nerfed so again this is like it's kind of like the same thing with tristana like there's not many ae carries that can really compete with them you know it's just varus tristana zaya twitch were like the big four and kogma was nerfed but i think he went back up into like the top five so now kogma so when they're nerfed, it doesn't actually bring them that close to the other champions, you know, because they're they're above the other one, the other competition by a long shot. And Ezreal, I keep forgetting Ezreal. I keep forgetting Ezreal. Ezreal's very good too. Ezreal, I think, a solid like fourth place or something like he's he's maybe like the number five in this this top five. Um, he's always really solid as a as a eighty carry. He's very safe, very um, uh, good damage throughout the game, very reliable. Uh, Ezreal's very solid. Might even be above Twitch. Um, I wouldn't put him above Zaya, Tristana, or or Varus, though, for sure. Um, he's been nerfed too much for that. He's still very solid, but uh, like Zaya and Tristana and Varus will consistently outdo him. You know, like out out, put more positive impact for their team than Ezreal. Volibear. So ultimately, Twitch, same thing as Tristana. I don't think his placement really changes. Looking at the numbers, it's not even a huge deal. Um, yeah. But why did they say unchanged? Doesn't make any sense. But maybe actually, like, I'm looking at this 40 damage feels like a lot. And they say, oh, well, press the attack was buffed. And I'm like, that affects everybody. So maybe Twitch, he actually does move down quite a bit. 40 damage does matter. Um, 40 damage does matter. So maybe he does move down. But Ezreal, Zaya, Tristana, Cog, they're pretty much the same. Volibear. Ultimately, I think with his current kit, Volibear right now, he doesn't um, work in higher ranks. He is too kiteable. He has too many bad matchups, at least in, in top lane. In jungle, he is outdone by Sejuani. Uh, are there any other good jungle tanks? Mostly it's Sejuani. Um, Volib I mean, Jarvan can go uh, tankies like Cinderhulk build and still like outdo him uh, because they mainly have more mobility or more CC, uh, more damage. And Ramit. Ramus is jungle tank. He's kind of he's kind of unpopular, but like again, Ramus is a better jungle tank than Volibear as well, because he's not really kiteable in the same way. So what they do? His bonus move speed went up. So when you put more points in Q, you're going to move faster. Okay, it's not by like a huge difference. It's ten percent, but not huge. Bonus movement speed towards champions. That's also going to go up. By, it looks like the same amount. Another ten percent. Not huge. When Volibear changes direction, his bonus movies decays after, decays after one second. That's nice. That means you can juke more. Um, like you can you can juke to the side and stuff and not lose the uh, movement speed, or you can like uh, run away better. Actually, nice, but so far nothing really to make Volibear actually like a real champion in my eyes. Um, Hungry Bear, Frenzy cooldowns have to use on a minion. Okay, so maybe that doesn't matter. You don't use it on minions. Even if you're top even if you're top lane Volibear. If you use it on minions, red flag. Enemy top laner is thinking, oh, well, even if it's halved, I don't know what the cooldown is. But let's say it's eight seconds. That's really low. Like I think at the max rank his his cooldown goes down, 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 and then it's like somewhere like eight seconds. If it goes down to eight, if it's eight seconds, and he bites a minion at level nine, top lane Volibear, 
by its minion. And Goblin was like, oh, well, that's down for four seconds. I have a window where I can trade, and he has no bite. Why would you ever bite a minion? You will never bite a minion. This is a change targeted at shitty players. It doesn't affect his power level at all. Um, unless you're just gar unless you're like fat finger it and and bite a minion in a gank and now you're like oh well it's up now in um <laughs> in half the cooldown so it's not as punishing but like that that's not something to e slightly knocks enemies back so it can cancel jumps enemies who are dashing or airborne before Roy's cast are dealt damage additional damage so it's gonna be like a, a poppy uh, w right the little wall of light that blocks jumps. Uh, his E will knock back and deal damage. That'll add more uh, utility to him. That's not enough for him to be good, honestly. Like, basically, the only thing meaningful change he got was he gains 10% movement speed, which isn't going to mean that he's not kited in situations he was kited before. Not really. He gets slight knockback. That's specific to only like certain champions, like okay, maybe like Tristana, like a jump that's really telegraphed. Oh well, now he can knock it back. Like he can, he can use it kind of like a mini, like a flay almost on on Thrash. But Volibear is always going to be using his E like at the beginning, anyways, because it gives you more <laughs> more like uh, sticking power on the target. You know, the movement speed it it actually persists after you hit the person right if you hit somebody you'll still get the movement speed for like the four seconds or whatever and then you can use the slow to extend the trade so it is kind of it's kind of nice because this means the sticking power is better once it gets onto you but and then you can kind of save this for dashes that's not enough Volibear, I do remember, it does a lot of damage. Does a lot of damage, but is a lot of damage enough? This also allows him a way to proc Aftershock. It's unreliable, but it can be done. And of course, his flip can proc Aftershock too. And it is reliable. Hmm. Okay, whatever. I don't think he. I don't think he comes back. I don't it, like. I first time I saw these changes, I was like, maybe he's a counterpick to some matchups top lane where it have really obvious jumps, and if you get on their face, they'll die like Riven. Um, it like, but then you have to think, oh well, he's not better than other options. Since he's not better than other options, there's not really any reason to play him unless you just like like Volibear and you play him purely for that aspect. Okay, uh, Zin Zhao. Total attack damage went down quite a bit. For the, so the third attack hit went down quite a bit at, at those later rings. Early game, the say is pretty much the same. This thing doesn't prolong your buffs as long. And now it positions at the end of cast. So if you like get Alistar knocked back whenever you, you do your W, you... Uh, you don't hit them still. It's kind of lame. Short range dashes will now correctly move Zin Zhao forward to the target. Um, Zin Zhao right now is a pretty decent jungler. He's been gaining a bit of popularity because the Korean server started building um, crit, crit on Zin Zhao. They would go Warrior Enchantment and then they'd go Static Shiv and then Infinity Edge and uh, then either build other things that they wanted for damage or they just continue building crit. Um, and that's a really powerful build. And I think Riot is like, damn, that's disgusting. We can't allow this. And they're just like stomping that out right now because the uh, the bonus attack damage would um would crit as well i think this ultimately just makes because he wasn't picked a lot he was not picked a lot in higher ranks at all uh and the crit build was kind of carrying him i think maybe this is a nerf targeted more to lower elos or maybe zin Zhao would be more effective in and honestly i think he would still be good i don't think the changes do much like this is a nerf and you will feel a damage difference but 
a lot of times Xin Zhao's overkilling his targets, like in ganks, um, and stuff, for it, to the point where it's like not a huge deal. So I think he doesn't change. This is one of the changes I was talking about. Like I don't think they really changed the power level of the, the champion. This uh, Zed gets uh, increase like reduced cooldown on his ultimate at later ranks. I don't think that really changes the power level of Zed. Twenty seconds off on his um his ult at level sixteen is nice because Zed will generally be high level because he'll go into a split push a phase in the game after like uh, twenty minutes where he's just going to be split pushing or or something primarily and trying to pick people off. If he can do if he can you know get the uh, picks on people right. Hmm. Generally, I find when I play Zed, I'm not a I'm not a super good Zed uh, by any means, but I generally learn how to play champions by watching good good players. Personally, I find that I don't have the problem that I'm not able to kill people because my ultimate's not up, at least in the late game, right? In the early game, yeah. If this were like 90 seconds, that'd be awesome. If the 120 went down to 90. But in the late game, it's not like, oh, well, my ultimate's not up, so I can't kill them. It's normally like there's not a good time to go in. So it's more like timing-based that you're getting your kills than, than your cooldown of your ultimate getting your ability to kill people. So I honestly think this doesn't change the power level of Zed for that reason. Of course, it, it's, a, it's a buff, no matter how you look at it. But like, I don't think it's, it means much at all. Zaya, her health went up. Her base damage went up. Okay, those are buffs. Her sparkles went 15, 20. Her sparkle damage went wait, 15, 20. So up by 2, 25. Up by 3, 30. Up by 4. Okay, so it's going up to where it's, it has more early game power. Her sparkles have more early game power. Uh, and they, you know, end at the same rank, uh, same level. Looks like more early game power, less like mid game power, and then ends up being the same later on. The AP ratio went up. Okay. Base damage went down by 65. <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay. The ratio went down by 0.2. No longer applies more sparkles to first enemy. Can she even one shot someone now? She lands E. Can she even one shot somebody without having like without being fed, right? Because before she could just have she could just hit one item and one shot you from like zero 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 like Zoe's zero 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 and you're zero zero zero. She hits Merlinomicon and she lands a bubble and then she one shots you and that like nobody would be surprised about that because like that like well they know that's how Zoe works. I wonder if she can even one shot at that point anymore just one item can she just pop people or even a two two items can she like pop an ad carry for instance if she lands her bubble or are they gonna live with like 15 percent health now it's a big difference so i don't know exactly what the numbers mean but it, it like obviously they're they're hitting her burst by how much i'm not sure i'd have to play against her or play as her to to know really but that's if it if it knocks her out of the ability to one shot her like she's dead there's no point in picking her at all there are champions who can more reliably deal damage from a long range uh that is kind of unavoidable like zareth right you can just q it's into low risk it'll be up in four seconds if you miss it doesn't matter really or, or zareth ult you know why pick zoe um, if that's the case, right? If she can, she might still be solid. And it looks like it doesn't apply, um, the, the more sparkles damage as much. But the, the thing about moving the ratio on the passive as opposed to the Q, the Q did more damage based on how far it is. I don't know if the, if this passive ratio actually gets scaled with the Q damage. If it doesn't, then that's even more of a nerf. Okay, let's look at the other abilities. Looks like they just nerfed her Q, uh, by a lot and her Q was her main damage. So very... Very unfortunate for the, the filthy Zoe players. Spell Thief no longer drop teleport. That's really good because now she can't get a free out of a hard lane whenever she fucks up and runs out of all mana because she threw too many abilities or lost too much health or something like that. Like It's really frustrating when she gets to get a free teleport and then gets to refill all of her, her stuff. She can't get that anymore. 
That is really nice. Um, her movement speed bonus went up. Whatever. Ratio went up. Whatever. I mean, I don't even know what this thing... I don't even know how impactful this thing is. Generally, like, in team fights, she just spams the thing. It went, If it goes up, like, whatever. I mean, generally, the way that Zoe... Like, the only... Zoe, in my mind, only has, like, two abilities. She has her bubble, and she has her Q. And her ultimate is basically her Q. <laughs> like, her ultimate is just something you use with your Q every time, so it, like, feels like part of the thing, and it's so low cooldown that it doesn't really feel like an ultimate. So, they're trying to turn this into a real ability. I think... I don't think this is going to do it. I think it's still kind of ignorable. Um... The teleport change, really nice. Sleepy bubble is no longer reduced. Okay. So less less potential for a combo because she has less less bubbles, up to 30% less bubbles, actually. Removing drowsy also prevents, so you can QSS the, the drowsy before, it, like the sleep before it, it hits you. Okay. Or you can um, McHale's it. That's really nice. Or I wonder if you can McHale's it because it's, but yeah, it's uh, it's really good. Cleanse and stuff will be easier. Oh, goodness. I think Zoe's dead. For solo queue, I was already saying she lost her rank one spot last patch with the nerfs. She was maybe like fifth or sixth best. Not even like S tier. And now it's like, don't pick her at all. Just don't play her. She's not worth it. Not worth it at all. Extra damage to minions. We worried about removal of own old runes. Make last sitting too hard. We gave all champions bonus five damage to minions. Over time, we realized it wasn't necessary. Well, I don't like this chance personally because I've, I've it feels really comfortable. I feel I feel like it should feel comfortable. The last hit minions, basically, that's no longer deal five bonus damage to minions. Like it feels really comfortable to have that. You know, I don't see why that's wrong. But I mean, ultimately, it's a change that's going to affect everybody pretty much the same. It's like whatever. This uh, only ends up being a problem if you're getting pushed under tower and that five damage could have mattered, you know, if the minion lives with like five health or something. Uh, that's the only situation I can see this really being a meaningful change, like regardless of your skill level. Otherwise, it's just like a, it's like a negative quality of life change to me personally. I don't like it, but whatever doesn't matter too much unless you're getting pushed under tower and this is somehow preventing you from killing the minions and like one auto attack or something movement speeds getting out of the coin items hmm so nomads ends up being like half of boots the problem with this getting movement speed the thing is the way you generate gold on coin is you have to afk in lane pretty much you have to stay in lane to get it getting movement speed favors roaming if you roam, you're not getting the coins because you have to like witness minions dying. So if you're roaming, it's better to have spell thieves or relic. So these stats really don't fit very well with that. Unless you're playing a champion that somehow like the movement speed could get you into use your abilities, like maybe a Soraka with a little extra movement speed, you can go in and land a Q and then run out. Um, more maybe i mean a lot of like frostfang is much better statted so most champions would just want frostfang anyways i don't see ancient coin being much better honestly purely because the the way the stat would matter is if you're roaming and um if you're roaming you're not getting as much gold off of this thing so i don't think it's very good relic shield's getting nerfed this is because everyone was building it on, um, everyone was building it, even on solo lanes, just to get the bandit passive and, and generate gold. 25 health, 50 health. I mean, this is obviously a nerf to the, the melee frontliners. Uh, they'll probably still be the best picks, you know, like Braum and, um, Tom Kinch and... Alistar and stuff. But um, this will make the Spell Thieves users a little bit stronger by comparison. Not by a ton, but like, you know, the base base stats are going to be a little higher. Uh, so like Soraka is a champion, I think is coming back a little bit with the uh, Emacs. Like uh, Soraka gets three points in her E, runs Aerie, and uh, 
bullies people with the early damage, and it's a lot easier to secure kills with the with a few points in E. Uh, so I think she's she's pretty benefited from this change, and others maybe spell thieves users like Jonna would like this change as well, and Lulu. Otherwise, I don't think the meta really changes. I'm just saying maybe maybe Jonna. Well, Jonna was already at rank one spot, but like uh, maybe Lulu goes up a little bit. Uh, maybe Soraka goes up a little bit uh, compared to the other popular supports right now. Removed tracker's knife. Okay. Well, outside of like a tracker knife, just generally a good item, especially for jungle tanks, because. Otherwise, in solo queue, most people go skirmishing saber, just across the board. Lee Sin likes tracker's knife because it allows him to do his insects easier. Other than that, it doesn't really matter. I mean, nobody can build it; they can't get as much vision, so the games are going to be more bloody. I mean, it's an across-the-board change. It doesn't really affect anyone specifically, except for maybe Jackson and Lee Sin, who like to ward jump, but. Wits end. Oh, and Nunu. Nunu likes likes this thing, but um, he can honestly build a skirmishing saber and be fine. And he can even get the uh, he can even get relic shield. Right, he can get relic shield for the um, for the wards. You can proc the. You can just generate the five hundred gold, get the sight stone out of it, and that kind of does this. Right. Wits end going down in price. Uh, going up in damage. What? <laughs> Magic with a stolen per attack. Up. Total. Maximum stolen. Those are all buffs. And Varus is the number one AD carry. Range champion steal half the MR. Okay, so instead of five, it's going to three. So it's going to have my 40%. But once you get Ginsu's, right, and you stack up the Ginsu's, you're still already procking the wit's end almost full at really fast. So ultimately, this is a buff, I would say, to Varus and Kogma. And I don't think it's warrants. I don't think it's needed. Honestly, they're the strongest AD carries in the game, and you're buffing their items. Their Varus was never nerfed. This guy is still going to be rank one. I don't care if you if you halved it for ranged champions like the amount stolen. You also you also increase the maximum to where now he just gets one more auto attack, and now that's five maximum like magic pin shred you can do. So now if somebody only has thirty magic resist, right? They didn't they didn't build any. Now you can just completely remove their magic resist. You don't even understand the difference. Well, maybe you do understand, but like like the difference between eighty carry with thirty magic with with five magic resist because it got twenty five shredded and zero magic resist is a big number. It's something I don't even remember like what I don't know. The exact number, but it's got to be something like eight eight percent damage or something. So Varus is potentially getting a much higher amount of DPS he can do to that champion or something because he's setting that their magic resist to zero now, and it's cheaper. He gets it like you have to also think like you don't don't get the effect until you completely finish the item, and the item's just getting cheaper. It's like stupid. Nobody's gonna build it now just because it works better. Like who can use it? Warwick. Warwick can use it as a substitute to maybe like a um, Spear of Visage. Or maybe like as well as Spear of Visage, but like uh, yeah, against like heavy AP team, right? Warwick maybe can use it. I mean, it's, it's buffed for him. Deals more damage, costs less, steals more magic resists. Maybe Warwick likes it. Other than that, you have to be a champion that, use, that uses magic damage and wants the... Um, and his melee, right? That's the thing. Like, for range champions, it's pretty much the same. For Teemo, it's pretty much the same. For Kale, it's pretty much the same because they're considered range champions. Uh, is there any melee champion that actually deals magic damage that doesn't want AP more? Like, Diana wouldn't want this. She would want AP. I can't think of any. So, I think only Warwick maybe considers building this. And even then, it's like, he doesn't generally build it. Warwick's more successful with more tanky items, like uh, Locket. I would say, for magic resist or spirit vision. Stat bonuses. Okay, so this I think is the change where you're gonna get your stats split for the precision tree when you go secondary primary. Um, 
So this is going to be really nice. I mean, the first thing I thought of when I saw this change was Victor. Victor's having a lot of success right now going fleet footwork. And um, now that he doesn't get as much attack speed and more ability power, which he wants, uh, it'll be nice for him. As well as for other mages, if they want um, more... If, like, they didn't really benefit from the attack speed, but they like the the fleet footwork keystone specifically like the precision one I'm, I'm basically just fleet footwork is the one that, that they would that other people consider because it's the only really good keystone in the precision tree uh so like echo maybe for instance he likes a little bit of attack speed he likes the ability power uh he'll like the movement speed and the heal maybe echo can see some uh increase in win rate i don't know if electrocute electrocute is generally what i see people run uh, but maybe getting more mobility right on the echo could be uh, useful. Might be a little better to go uh, fleet footwork. Um, other champions that I can think of use mobility pretty well. Um, is better for junglers now. Fleet footwork is better for a lot of junglers because you don't want just attack speed, you want attack damage whenever you're in a gank because that's normally what's going to happen. So, like Graves, Graves will like this. Fleet footwork change. Um, Jax, Jungle Jax might like running. Um, well, hmm. Jungle Jax, I think, likes the. Uh, uh, he won't really care. The attack speed and the um, and the attack attack damage stat, they're both really good. Gnar. Gnar likes being able to have some attack damage. Gnar will like this change because he can go fleet footwork and still get some attack damage. Hmm. You also have to think like now going fleet footwork since it scales off of ability power and stuff. This means I think it scales off of twenty percent ability power, right? So when you get nine ability power, for instance, for going domination, you're gonna be healing an extra two, which will add up, right? So it also makes it even better on like Victor and stuff and Echo. Victor and Echo really only only ones I can that come to my head. But it's worth considering if you don't really need a damage keystone like Electrocute. Um, on Vladimir, I don't think it's replacing a uh, spellbook. Spellbook uh, mobility is really nice. On the press the attack, damage is increased. And the damage amp is decreased. I don't know how much that matters. Mostly the people who use press the attack right now is Lucian. It's the only one I can think of. And uh, Shivana. Xin Zhao does sometimes, but the, the little Korean crit Xin Zhao thing that people have been doing runs Phase Rush. People have been liking Phase Rush on Xin Zhao. So, I mean, this buff to Lucian. I don't know if AD carries will switch off of their Keystone. I don't know how much this matters because it looks like it's just 10 damage early on. And Lucian will like that. If this actually ends up being quite a bit, I don't like level 18 is a long way away. I don't know how it scales. Like I don't know how much damage that's gonna be in the mid game and all that. But uh, I think Lucian gets a little better. Lucian I think is underrated. People people think he's not playable right now, but he's actually pretty strong. He's just not. He he actually has quite a bit of a learning curve. Lucian has a, a pretty. I'm gonna say his average win rate is a lot lower than the win rate he could have if people knew how to play him. So, like, he's worth playing. And, and maybe if uh, this change matters, Lucian will see a lot of success in solo queue. Resolve. Unflitching has been moved to the Vitality Row, which is a Vitality Row. Hmm. Redemption has been moved. Font of Life, Bone Plating... Demolish. Okay, I see. Because I know stat changes, so let me just look at this. Bone plating is... Um, after taking damage... So this doesn't apply to the first hit. Or if Maybe it does apply to the first hit you take. But basically, it's going to reduce next three attacks or spells. So in one trade, it's going to reduce 60 damage. That's pretty busted. 
Even if it's a 45 second cooldown, that's pretty busted. This is really strong. Bone plating is really strong. I would say take this, especially over like Font of Life and Demolish. They're not giving you combat stats. This thing is, that's a lot of damage. As well as even like on, on like a mid laner, like thinking against like a burst mage, if you burst, see like after taking damage, the next three spells, you know, deal, let's say like at the point where they're going to burst you because it goes 20 to 50 here. I don't know if you can read that, but it's 20 to 50 based on level. Let's say it, it blocks 30 damage each or even 33 to make the numbers easy, 33.3. Uh, it'll block 100 damage off their combo. It means you could live with 100 damage. Like, you, you, that's really good. Just in general, I think bone plating is, is very strong. It's almost like taking Guardian, in a way. Like a better version of Guardian. Because the duration is 5 seconds, which is a long time. So, if you're going to love tree, go bone plating. Second wind. I don't know, revitalize or unflinching. I don't think you take conditioning over second win unless you're a jungler. If you're sitting in a lane, you'll go second win. Bone plating seems really good. Unless you're like a support that can, you know, proc the font of life really easily, like, a, you know, like a Tom Kench or a Soraka or Jana or something, you know, you just go uh, bone plating. It seems like a keystone level of strength. It's really strong. Inspiration Tree no longer grants potion duration. Okay. Stopwatch is getting nerfed. I think this is going to make people go boots over stopwatch across the board. So just take the boots over stopwatch, in my opinion. Celestial Body removed. I liked that keystone. Uh, time Warp Tonic. Potions, biscuits. Potions, elixirs, and biscuits last 20% longer. Longer well, the effects of potion, elixir, and biscuits grant 5% movement speed. This is going to be noticeable on champions that use the corrupting potion on those champions this keystone is really strong of course this is basically like the like it no longer increases potion duration but like uh it's that on there but the five percent movement speed like you have to consider elix elixirs as well are they last for three minutes so you get 5% increased movement speed. So like if you're in a split push situation where you're split pushing, the 5% movement speed will matter. So that's something. Blast cones don't spawn as early. That makes uh, jungle pressure a lot lower, actually. Because you can't blast cone over here. You can't blast cone over here to accelerate your, your pathing. Ancient crugs no longer take reduced damage for range attack. I did not know that happened, but... Generally, like, laners on this side are favored now. So, like, like uh, if you're on this side of the map, you, you can take these Krugs. I mean, you already should be doing this, but, like, it's easier to do it now. And you can already take the Gromp as well. Um, uh, I generally always do this when I have free time. Uh, I'll take these camps as an AD carry, which, uh, of course, that gets, that gets buffed if these Krugs take more damage now. I didn't even know they did that, but they had reduced damage, but... Hand of Baron. Baron buff gets stronger. I don't I don't really know how to comment on these. Like Baron buff gets stronger. So just assume that the enemy can close if they get Baron more. I, I don't know exactly how these numbers, like what the breakpoints they reach to where uh, I can't really give an accurate assessment of what what exactly is gonna change. I think Baron buff is already very strong at closing games. I've just seen like in tournaments they they don't like in the LCS and all that. Generally, the games are lasting a really long time. They want to make Baron a lot more good at breaking those inhibitor towers. Elder Dragon is going to be spawning. It's going to get stronger, and the respawn is going to be eight minutes. You hardly ever see Elder Dragon at all. Let alone you. Don't, you never see. It. I've never seen a second Elder Dragon. I played a shit ton of games, so i don't think this matters this only matters for the tournaments because riot realizes that people are dropping this game because it's too boring to watch honestly and i think that's a good enough slap in the face for riot to uh to realize that oh they need to hire some people who know how to balance a game <clears throat> Honor, you see unique stats. Um, OK. 
Okay. Okay, it doesn't look like any of the bug fixes really matter. So, that'll be that.